everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and I have a couple cards to show you today, uh, both of which are using an alcohol inked background is my main focus. And I was just having way too much fun creating these. So this is a little bit longer of a video than I would normally do, but hopefully you can take away uh, one or all of the techniques and apply them to your cards. So what I'm starting with is this isopropyl alcohol, which is 91%, and UPO paper. UPO paper is something I like to use for the alcohol inks. And this is a little different for me as where I'm wetting my UPO paper first. So I took a dropper and added a bunch of the alcohol onto that background. So it was nice and wet, moved it around so it filled that entire piece. And then I'm just dotting on a variety of blues and greens of the alcohols. And I will have these uh, listed here shortly. And then I just take my paper and I move that around. I do recommend, whoop, there goes my nail. <laughs> I do recommend wearing rubber gloves if you don't want to get your fingers uh, all dirty. I shouldn't say dirty, just full of alcohol ink. Uh, it does take a few days to wear off. But I do this on top of a craft mat just to try and contain some of that mess. And I'm dabbing off the excess with this paper towel. So you can see this is a really smooth blend. Using this isopropyl alcohol, it really gets the alcohol ink to move. It's very fluid and it lightens up these colors a little bit, which is what I wanted. I've done some before using the blending solution and it is a lot more vibrant and doesn't move as well. So depending on what look you're going for, uh, you could try one or the other, but this alcohol, the isopropyl 91% does get this to move really, really well. So I just kept playing with it until I was satisfied. Now this is the second background that I'm going to create and I just chose a few different shades of blue as a little bit something different. This is the dry background on Yupo paper. So I just took those alcohol inks, dropped some all across the card. And you can see with this dry background, they're not moving as well yet. And so I just kept randomly placing some drops. They're not moving really well. I kind of wanted more of a fluid background. So I'm just taking this eyedropper and placing that alcohol around there to get that to move. You could also drop that down and use a straw to blow it around instead of tilting the paper. I, I couldn't uh, do the straw trick at this time due to some dental work I had done. So that is why I'm just moving my paper, which works just as well um, as using the straw technique. And I'm placing that paper towel under my work surface just to kind of catch any of that excess ink and dabbing off with a paper towel. I kind of was hoping that those texture marks from the paper would stay there, but they didn't. It kind of just all blended back together, which was fine. So like I said, I, it's just something to play with. You just keep adding the alcohol ink or the isopropyl to whatever you find, you know, kind of just sticks out to that you want to use for a background and then just set it off onto the side to dry. And it will dry a little bit differently than what, you know, you're originally seeing when it's wet. So it does tone down those colors a little bit and just keep adding and playing. This is a really fun technique, great for ocean backgrounds. I love making ocean backgrounds with the alcohol inks. And you wanna make sure when doing this, you're using colors that blend together nicely. Obviously I use the blues and greens, so, so I knew they wouldn't make mud when they started to kind of blend together like that. So while my alcohol ink backgrounds are drying, I went ahead and stamped a bunch of different different ocean images. So, you know, they has a lot of smaller stamp sets and I just thought, you know what, this is a great time to use the stamp sets that I have. So you can see there are quite a few. I have the starfish and the jellyfish. I'm using some images from the Your Sublime stamp set. And also on another piece of cardstock, I have stamped a bunch of extra seaweed 
just so I could use those in my background. I knew I'd need quite a few of them. So I'm doing some very basic coloring here. I am doing this on Nina Solar White cardstock, 80 pound. I stamped it in the Lawn Fawn black ink, jet black ink, which is Copic friendly. So I could color with Copic markers and it won't bleed out. And I added a light shade first of my color combination and then blending out from darkest to lightest. I'm not doing anything fancy and I'm honestly not really worried about where exactly my shading should go just for the fact that I just want a dimension and with smaller images like this you don't have to be real particular it doesn't have to be an absolutely perfect blend of colors as long to me anyway as long as there's some dimension I'm great with it and you can see my jellyfish I just threw in a quick shadow, blended it out, and moved on. And I tried to use some of the same colors throughout, whether it was flip-flopping them between fish or uh, on the submarine, just to kind of minimize it because since there are a lot of creatures, I didn't want to have my entire Copic collection sitting out on my desk. So I just went back and forth through all of my creatures, getting them colored up because I was going to be making two cards. So I wanted to make sure that I had a really nice variety of those ocean creatures swimming around in their ocean background. The cute little eel, I did some greens. My seaweed, I did some darker greens just to have that contrast. And I also had done a bunch of those little fish. I thought they were just a really great uh, little bit to add to the rest instead of all the bigger creatures and you could see I just flip flop colors on my fish and then I have this fun little lobster and I barely did any blending on the lobster I added a base color and then came in with a dark one and moved on so like I said there isn't a whole lot of blending I didn't want this to be the main focus of the card since there is so much more going on but I did want to show you the Copic coloring and just how how easy it can be with the images. I'm put putting those finishing touches of my sub submarine and then I'm going to go ahead and die cut these all out with the coordinating dies. This next piece I'm just using a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock again and I'm taking my Versamark ink and just covering that entire piece of cardstock with the Versamark ink and then I'll cover that with the gold embossing powder. I wanted to use this for the porthole frames and I wanted that to be a nice shiny gold. So I just covered that entire background and I actually did this twice. One I did off camera just to save time, but I did do this twice so I have this for both cards. And then I'll come in and heat emboss this and I made sure that my heating tool was nice and hot when coming in so that I'm not sitting too long on the background and warping my cardstock. And see that's a really nice shiny gold. And once that's cooled down, I kind of flatten that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my porthole frame. And I have that one done now. I also have a piece of paper bag cardstock that I had gone ahead and die cut the stitched wood grain thought that kind of was really cool look like a, a boat type of type of look going for it and I wanted to create a hole through that so I'm using one of the circles from the uh, circle stackables and it matched fairly well you can see my porthole frame doesn't quite line up with it but that's perfectly fine I'm not going to concern myself with that I'm going to keep moving on it'll attach to the card and that's all I needed it to do you can see here I have both of them done. One is going to be portrait, one is going to be landscape. These are the alcohol ink backgrounds. See, they're gorgeous. I mean, they just really look like an ocean background. Really loving how these came out. I did go ahead and trim those both down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And you can see here I have my stitched wood grain piece there. I also took some vanilla malt cardstock and I cut the stitched hillside so that gave me a sandy bank for at the bottom of my card here's one I already put together with my acetate window which is what we're going to create and I'm hiding the back of that with some white cardstock so that's what I'm going to show you now 
I have this piece of acetate that actually measures five and a half by, I believe it was five and a quarter. And then I scored just an inch in so that the front of it is going to match up my four and a quarter by five and a half for the front of my card. And then I just folded that over. I wanted that lip so that I could attach that to my card. So I gave that a really nice crease. And that's going to fit right over my panel. And then you can see the lip on the back is extra. So I'm going to attach this with some double-sided adhesive. I'm just laying a couple strips down. This is really nice adhesive. I'm, it's going to stick really well. And I actually want to hide this strip on the back of my alcohol ink background. So once I get this lined up to the front of my card, fold that over and stick that down. I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to attach that to the back of that card. So that's going to hide my acetate strip. You're not going to be able to see that. It's not something you have to do. I just think it was a nice finishing touch. I like to clean my acetate with a Swiffer cloth just to help remove static or anything that might have gotten stuck to it from my desk. And now I need to take this front panel and attach it to the acetate. So I'm using my Xyron sticker maker. This is the bigger one. And I ran that through and this is going to cover the entire front panel. And what I do when I take that out, I flip it over and I'm pushing down from the back. This is going to help make sure that all of that stickiness from the sticker maker is attaching to my card panel. So when you remove this backing, that whole thing is going to be covered. And that way you're not going to see anything when you attach it to your acetate and open your card. It's going to be one nice clean layer of adhesive. And then I have this little window. You don't have to add the acetate. I just thought it was a really nice fun touch. And you can see here, I did that to both of the cards. You could just leave it open and that would be perfectly fine as well. I just, this was something I was kind of playing with and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stop. <laughs> Once you get started on a card, I thought, oh, I should try this. Or wait, I want to try this. So I just kind of kept going and that's where this video took a little longer than I anticipated. I'm attaching my porthole frames with the Lawn Fawn glue and adding that with the tweezers that just help keep my fingers out of the way and pushing that down really nice and I can go ahead and add my ocean banks to the bottom of the cards you can kind of see that through my porthole windows there so these are really coming together nicely I just think these turned out really cool how you can look through this into your ocean scene just kind of a fun almost interactive card and I have all of my creatures and images die cut out so now I can start getting these added to my background and this is all completely personal personal preference where you want to add them the easiest thing I have found is using this Xyron sticker maker the submarine was kind of a tight fit but I was able to squeeze it through you just kind of got to be careful and finagle with it a little bit but these, it was so quick. I just drop these in and pull that out and it's going to have the adhesive on the back of each and every one of these. This saved me a lot of time versus uh, using the liquid glue or even using my tape runner and doing each individual one. I just pop these in, pull it through and move on, especially since I was doing two cars and these are such small images. So I just kept running them all through. And I'll have this really long strip <laughs> once I'm all set. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the front panel is once these are all through, I'll flip it over onto my desk and push down from the back. I have really found that that is the best way to get all of that adhesive. If you were just to try and pull that off, you're going to have sticky stuff all over the place. But if you run your bone folder over the back of all of these and really push down that adhesive is really going to stick to your image and it's going to make for a nice clean um, attachment to your card. 
So just going through, finishing that off, getting them all pushed down really well. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start creating my ocean scene. So you're kind of looking through, you know, what do you want? Peeking through the window, what you want kind of hidden. If you want to stamp or write a message in the inside of your card, I would definitely think about that before you get too too involved in your in your background. I didn't leave a lot for a message area. I just left enough where I could sign it somewhere. But if you wanted to stamp anything in the inside or write any, anything in the inside, definitely think about that as you're doing this. And see, this is really easy. I am just picking these off of that backing sheet and popping them on. And if you don't push down right away, there is some wiggle room to move these around if you didn't like where something was set. Now I'm going to do a quick sentiment onto the front of the card. So I'm using the Simply Sentiment stamp set. I didn't do anything too fancy. I'm just coming in and stamping these onto the Vanilla Malt cardstock. I'm going to do both of them at once using my Misty tool and stamping them with the Lawn Fawn Black Licorice Ink, which is a really nice black crisp ink. And then I can take those and die cut them out using the banner die and I would have to run this through twice and I'll have these ready to go and just adding to the front of my card. So thank you so much for sticking with me through this longer video. I hope uh, you picked up some inspiration from it, whether it was all the techniques or a couple of them and give them a try and be sure to also head to the Lawn Fawn blog. We are doing a collaboration with the with Siron, so be sure to check out all the amazing inspiration on there as well. Thank you again so much for hanging in there with me, and have a great day.